What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV and today I am super excited to be bringing you a new backpack review on the Hyperlight Mountain Gear Southwest 3400 backpack. Now this is a departure for me. If you have been around here on the channel, you know that I have almost exclusively used really high comfort style backpacks. They're often very heavy and this is my first time reviewing a backpack that is truly an ultralighter's backpack. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts and let's get into it, starting now. So first things first, the Hyperlight Mountain Gear Southwest 3400 pack is not exactly a brand new item on the market. Now this is a pretty classic through hiker, ultra lighters backpack. And uh, so why am I even giving this a review? Because there are so many new backpackers out there uh, that are coming to this channel and that have only been listening to my opinion on these higher end, uh, really luxury style backpacks. So I wanted to offer my perspective as a backpacker who's almost exclusively used the very uh, beefy kind of backpacks to moving over to an ultralighter's backpack because it was a fun experience actually getting to use this. I just went on a backpacking trip in the Wind River Range of Wyoming and hauled a 40 liter uh, load out here with this backpack for multiple days in the backcountry. And I've gleaned a good bit of wisdom off of it. And I wanted to share that with you. So before I give you my full review, I wanted to share some details about this backpack. First of all, the 3400 on this refers to the cubic inches and not liter capacity, which is kind of different for the Hyperlites. Uh, they refer to all of their packs in cubic inches instead of liters. So what does 3400 mean? That roughly translates almost exactly to 55 liters. So if you're curious as to where that sits in the scope of backpack sizing, this is essentially a 55 liter backpack. The Southwest 3400 weighs in at 2.18 ounces, which is also 988 grams. So that is a very, very light, minimal backpack here, clocking in at under one kilogram. This backpack retails for $379, which in my mind puts it in the high end category of backpacks. It is fairly pricey. But uh, why is it pricey? It's, it's such a simple backpack. Well, it's because of the materials. This backpack is made almost entirely of Dyneema material. So what is there to know about Dyneema? Well, Dyneema is a waterproof fabric. It is 100% waterproof before you start doing things like sewing needles through, through the fabric. So then Hyperlite, after it's stitched and sewn, will come back and re-tape and re-seam seal all of the attachment points, all of the sewing points, making this backpack as close to waterproof as you can get without officially calling it a dry bag. This is what this Dyneema fabric, you can really tell what's going on with the waterproofness by looking at the inside of the backpack. So it's got all this like waterproof stitching and sealant going on, taped seams where any of the stitching is happening. And this is, it feels kind of plasticky. Um, but it's all, it feels rugged, it feel, it, it's such a unique fabric. I don't really know uh, how to describe it if you haven't felt or used Dyneema in the past. The upper portion of this backpack is made from 50 denier Dyneema fabric, while the bottom portion is made from a robust 150 denier fabric. So that is very durable. Uh, most packs are going to be a lot less durable than this. This will be highly abrasion resistant and be more resistant to scrapes and tears and allowing you to go through some really rugged terrain without being very concerned about this backpack holding up. So this pack also comes with 600 cubic inches of storage here on the outside. These pockets are also made from Dyneema fabric. And mostly these are going to be used for things like water bottles or trekking poles, or especially on this outside, I've, I carry things like my rain jacket, my headlamp, or maybe my uh, map, things that I want easily accessible on the trail. So this is very handy. However, one thing that I have noticed is that it's very easy to use this as a uh, overspill place where it's just, I can't fit anything more in here and this becomes my last ditch effort to just haul 
anything I can, anything and everything, spilling out kind of awkwardly out of the back of this backpack. It does come with two Dyneema hip belts as well. And something that's really nice about this is that it comes with a waterproof zipper on those hip belts. So these are essentially also waterproof, which makes it a great place to secure things like cell phones or technology that you do not want to get wet right there with easy accessibility on the trail. Couple last things, inside the backpack, there is a place to store a hydration port. Uh, there is even somewhere around here, uh, let's, oh, over here. And right here, there is your little Velcro hydration port. If you hike with camelbacks, platypuses, anything like that, you can actually have one of those uh, nozzles coming out uh, your hydration port. I'm really used to having a big yoke system with the ability to lengthen the torso, shorten the torso, get things fitting up just right. Whereas here, there's almost nothing to adjust. You really can only adjust the lengths of your shoulder straps because there's no ability to adjust the torso length of this backpack. And I think that uh, that's one of the main ways you can save weight, but it's also a drawback because to me, there's no way to get this fitting any differently than how it comes from the manufacturer. Last bit of tech specs before I get into my overall thoughts and breaking this down. These shoulder straps have 1 8 inch foam padding on the shoulder straps. And to me, that is just really, really minimal. There is not much going on here for padding. Okay, so those are some of the techs and specs about the backpack. Now let's break down my thoughts on first, comfort. Okay, uh, comfort for this backpack is its biggest weakness. I think that this is among the least comfortable backpacks I've ever backpacked with. So in my Wind River backpacking trip, I was hiking about 40 to 42 pounds, and that's right around its max carry. And by the end of my trip, my shoulders were really going through some pain. And I backpack a lot, so that's new to me to experience that just cutting sensation where the weight is really just riding my shoulders hard. So I do not think that this is going to be a great backpack for comfort. However, most people, if you really are rocking this backpack, you need to keep that weight down probably closer to 30 pounds and maybe even in the 20 pound category. So really making sure that you are actually doing all of the things to minimize your weight because there is just not much going on here for how it's going to support that weight. So this is kind of a weird backpack for me because I backpack with camera equipment. I was in bear country. I was hauling a bear canister. All these things that add quite a bit of extra weight to my setup. So at 42 pounds, it was just kind of too much for a multi-day adventure. And I was, I was hurting by the end. Durability. The durability of these backpacks is pretty notorious for being excellent. So I know people who are some of the most hardcore, rugged expedition type people that have been using these backpacks for many years and they are still going strong. So I think that these backpacks are rugged. This Dyneema fabric is really special in terms of backpacking. It's very expensive fabric but it is so cool in terms of what it can actually do and how much abrasion it can withstand and how much this can be a backpack that will last you for a really long time if you invest in a backpack like this. Design thoughtfulness. This is kind of a backpack category. Design thoughtfulness is something that I like to talk about with all of my backpacks that I review. And typically what that means for me is how easy is it to organize things? How easy is it to access things as I'm on the trail? And this is a really unique backpack because there is not much going on in terms of design thoughtfulness, but that doesn't mean that a lot of thought didn't go into designing this. So what I mean by that is this is essentially a tube, a big tall tube that uh, you have this Velcro closure up here at the top, and then you just pack everything here and then whatever you don't pack inside can go in these pockets here. So it's, it's kind of a difficult backpack to grade in terms of design thoughtfulness, just because it's such a unique backpack that doesn't have separate compartments. I can't separate out my trowel and my poop kit and things like that. I don't have 
a bunch of outside extra zippers and pockets and access points. So it just is a different category. It is a different beast of a backpack. So, you know, something like my Bridger pack that I really have been raving about here on the channel a long time, it has so many different organizational points to it, which I'm more used to backpacking in that way that this is just not gonna have any of that. Last category is airflow, and there's really nothing going on to encourage airflow. Your back is literally just straight against this, so that's not really a category that I can really grade it on because there isn't any airflow. Uh, there is no way, there's no air chambers designed in, there's no closed cell foam that's going to help try to draw some of the air out and away from your body. So I did find myself getting a little bit sweaty using this backpack, even though I was using it in some uh, chillier temperatures up in Wyoming. So I can only imagine how much back sweat I'll be having uh, when I'm using this in Arizona and Utah in summer desert time uh, conditions, but it is what it is. That's how you save a lot of weight here. Okay, it's time for some gripes and some praises here on this backpack. Gripes, this 1 8 inch closed cell foam padding to me is just like, come on, double it. It'll make it like a quarter inch closed cell foam. If you just did that just right here, it would be more comfortable. So that, that would be really nice for me to see, just something like that. I don't know what Hyperlite's got going on, why they are committed to such minimalistic straps here. But again, this hasn't been my forte. I'm used to having that much more beefy, comfortable straps. And it was a challenge for me to get used to the lack of that. The other gripe that I had was that there's really no way to shift how this pack sits on me other than just lengthening my shoulder straps or tightening up my shoulder straps. That's kind of the only way I could get it to sit at different points on my hips and how much weight was actually on my shoulders. So I don't know how Hyperlite could change that without adding in a frame system, which would then of course add in a lot of weight. So that would be completely changing the type of backpack it is. However, I just found that by the end of my backpacking trip, I was having my shoulder straps in all sorts of funky positions just to ease the burden as it was cutting across my shoulders. So I don't know what they do about that, but that would be something that I would just love to see is how to get this a little bit more comfortable. Okay, why don't we come on in here, get in a little closer. I wanna talk about a couple more things uh, before we wrap up this video. So there's some things that I really like about this. And one is just this Velcro closure with the roll top. So when you are about to seal this up, you can just kind of, somebody's wrapping it up out here. Uh, you can just seal up that Velcro, roll this down, and buckle these up. And I really like how that actually seals up the backpack, makes it as close to a waterproof bag as you can really get with a backpack. And it's just, it feels everything is very tight and clean when it's all sealed up like that. Some things that I'm not used to are having this kind of overload point where if you've got something bulky like a big foam sleeping pad or say a big tent or I don't know what else you might have, that this is kind of a point where you, a lot of people would carry bulky, hopefully lightweight things. Um, that is not what I'm used to, but I actually kind of like it. And then if you don't use that, you can just really cinch that down. I like that this backpack can mimic the, whatever you're doing. So if you have a big mission, this thing can actually open up fairly large and you can have this be about that big or if you don't have a lot in it, you can really roll it down and you could even compress it to a much smaller backpack. You could theoretically easily use this as a day pack if you wanted to because it is so lightweight and you could just shrink it down if you want. A couple of other things is that I have had to relearn how to backpack and you might need to get some other things that you're not used to using such as like storage containers and things like this to just keep everything organized inside your backpack rather than just dumping everything in free form, having loose bits, uh, clothing, loose lighters, loose 
uh, stoves, all of those things, you might want to start having to organize them somehow so that you can pull them out and, you know, not just have it be a, like a bomb went off inside your backpack. So last things, who's this backpack for? This is not really going to be a beginner friendly backpack. So this backpack, if, if you've spent any time around ultralighters or through hikers, you've seen this backpack over and over again on the trail. I was just out in Montana doing a part of the CDT and this backpack was everywhere. So it is not new here, but if you are new to backpacking, this may not be the best choice because well, it's just not that comfortable of a backpack. It is geared towards more advanced terrain, more advanced backpacking. Uh, the benefit to it is that if you are really committed to lightweight backpacking, this is the cat's meow, as they would say. People are gonna be geeking out about this. And also people will probably look at you and be like, that person knows what they're doing. If you've got one of these backpacks, as long as you don't look like a total gong show about it. $379, this is not really a value backpack, uh, unless you consider things like the duration of the life that you're gonna have with a backpack like this. I, again, know people that have been using this backpack for uh, over a decade with some of the most rugged uh, terrain and adventures and expeditions that they could throw at it, and it, they're still going strong. So this can be a backpack for a long time if you choose, which then does kind of make it a value, but it is an investment at $379 for the 55 liter or the 3,400 cubic inch model. The Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 3400 is a bomber backpack. And if you are interested in being a little bit more aggressive in your style of backpacking, you wanna go for longer trips, you wanna do longer trails, you wanna do more expedition style backpacking, then this is going to be a great backpack for you and I highly recommend it. It is uh, the gold standard of ultralight style backpacks. So it's awesome. However, if you are on the new end, I would recommend genuinely sticking to more of the comfort focused backpacks uh, that are out there. There are many of them and you can save some money buying those backpacks instead. Okay, what do you think about this? Uh, what's your favorite Hyperlight Mountain Gear? What's your favorite ultralight backpack? I'd love to hear from you. Would you try this style of backpacking? Leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section below. All right, everybody, I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.